In the Souls series, there are good bosses and there are bad bosses, but what about the unsung heroes, the ones we love but get forgotten amongst the others? That's what I'm here to talk about today, everyone's getting their flowers. Let's take a look at the most underrated boss in each Souls game from Demon's Souls all the way to Elden Ring. Wow, I guess I really am the watch mojo of Souls games, damn it. Starting with Demon's Souls, I think we may have all expected this one, but it's the man whose name contains infinite cringy YouTuber jokes, The Penetrator. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make any jokes. The Penetrator is a fitting name for a boss who bent me over i'm just kidding this boss actually isn't too hard which i think is one of the biggest reasons he's often overlooked his attacks are pretty slow so you really just have to dodge a couple of times to get a big opening okay i swear that wasn't intended to be a joke and i still think he's the most underrated boss in demon souls due to his design and awesome opening cutscene, as well as just the pure enjoyment of the fight itself yes it's not the hardest fight in the world but since most of the bosses in demon souls are focused around a specific puzzle or gimmick to figure out it's refreshing to get a boss that focuses on the straight up combat you all know I love my 1v1 dual bosses anyway, so it's probably not a huge surprise that this is one of my favorites. I really wish he had a few extra moves or even just a slight variation for a phase 2, and I think this would have been a top tier boss fight. Especially since you still receive damage when blocking with a shield, even if it's 100% physical. Now the name makes a little bit more sense. Also, the remake added the penetrator set in a hidden area that somehow the community figured out how to get in like two weeks. I never got it because it looked like a pain, but it does look pretty damn cool. FromSoft fans are the best, man. But moving on to Dark Souls 1, I guess the jokes aren't going to stop here because we got the gaping dragon. I remember thinking this was one of the more interesting fights in the game, but it seemed like no one really cared about it. I don't think there are a ton of bosses in Dark Souls 1 that I really consider to be underrated, but when I thought about the gaping dragon, I felt like it deserved this spot. Definitely one of the most intimidating bosses in this game, and I think it was a good pivot from the other bosses we see leading up to it. And while I can't appreciate them normally, I'm not the biggest fan of the dragon fights in the Souls series, but this one was simple and executed pretty well. Also, elephant in the room, the design is... Yeah. I love the reveal in the cutscene as well, going from what looks like a harmless little crocodile to something as disturbing as the gaping dragon. There's not anything too crazy about its moveset or the fight itself, but I think it's pretty cinematic and the combination of a lot of little things done right is what gives it this spot for me. Also, say what you will about the difficulty, but I think this fight is still pretty intense. And don't say I should have picked Gwendolyn for this spot, that fight is awful. But anyway, next up we have Dark Souls 2. I think there are a lot of overlooked bosses in this game, but a lot of them fly under the radar due to how easy easy they are to defeat. I was going to say the Lost Sinner, but I think a lot of people agree she's one of the better bosses in Dark Souls 2, and I'll give an honorable mention to the Flexile Sentries for the creative idea, as well as the Ruined Sentinels for being a rare triple gank done right. But I think I'm actually going to give this one to the Pursuer. I know this boss is mentioned a lot, but I really don't see it getting the praise it deserves. Not only is his entrance pretty badass, especially after getting smacked by him earlier in the Cardinal Tower, but he's also a perfect boss for this point in the game. I love the option to parry and use the Ballistas, or just fight him normally. While the ballistas make this fight super easy, it's still pretty tough to pull off since you have to land the parry and make sure he's in the right position, which you probably won't be able to get on your first try. I always like trying to hit the parry and then just fighting him normally if I miss, and honestly, I love the fight either way. His moves also feel like they're in slow motion, which actually works really well with the pace of this game. He's still pretty aggressive, which can give you a good challenge, but if you know what you're doing, he shouldn't be too hard. And not to mention, the arena with the sunset is just ah, so good. The hitboxes are painful, though, but I think that's just a Dark Souls 2 problem. And if you need a reminder not to give up, Skeleton, I hand make these shirts with my friend if you want to support. They do run a little bit long, though, just a heads up. But moving on to Bloodborne, there's one boss that's always been a favorite of mine that I never see anyone talk about, and that boss would be the Shadows of Yarnum. This one shocked and terrified me in my first playthrough, and it's still one of the bosses I look forward to the most when I play this game again. I think this is the best triple gank boss fight in the series. Everything feels pretty well balanced and thought out. And while it can get a little bit overwhelming, that's kind of the point. I love running around trying to isolate one and slowly whittle its health bar down while the others chase you. It's definitely a huge rush and I always find it to be a decent challenge. Each shadow's abilities complement each other well and I think they did a good job not tipping the scale too much. And if you think it couldn't get any crazier, they have a horrifying second phase that still makes me panic, but luckily I can usually get one of the three down before anything gets too out of hand. The bosses gain some extra moves which is great, but my only problem with this part is the giant snakes that come 
out of the ground. I like the idea, but you're already dealing with enough here and it kind of feels impossible to avoid them while trying to handle the others. Luckily, it doesn't seem to happen too much, but that's still my one gripe with this fight. Also, the shadow that breathes fire is the bane of my existence. Getting caught in that is pretty much GG. But overall, this fight couldn't work in any game besides Bloodborne. It still surprises me how much it gets forgotten about. Give them their flowers, man. Come on. But moving on, we have Dark Souls 3. This one has a ton of underrated bosses, but I think that just speaks to the boss quality in this game overall. But there's one boss Nate and I have always talked about as one of the most slept on in the series, and that would be the Demon Princes. The DLC has some of the best bosses of all, so I understand how the Demon Princes got lost in the mix, but I really cannot praise this fight enough. I'm not even a fan of the big bosses like that, but in my opinion, this is Orenstein and Smode done better. Yeah, try and see if Watch Mojo would ever say that. The first phase has one demon take aggro, while the other plays passive and shoots poison. You have to kill both to reach the second phase, and you'll get a different result depending on the order you kill them in. But either way, the second phase is just insane, so difficult, and one is definitely harder than the other. This fight is a blast to fight with your friends, and I honestly think the overall fight and design is better than Madeira. Damn, we're throwing out all kinds of hot takes today. I put these at top three most underrated in the series, and some of the other close ones from Dark Souls 3 for me are Champion Gundir and Dragon Slayer armor for sure, but I still can't give it to anything other than the Demon Princes. Next up, we have Sekiro. I don't know if this is underrated, but I feel like it gets overlooked a ton in comparison to bosses like Ishin and Owl Father, but I'm gonna go with the true Corrupted Monk or the regular Corrupted Monk, both are underrated in my opinion. This is one of those fights like most in Sekiro that felt ridiculously hard for no reason in my first playthrough until I fought him enough to get it down. Honestly, that's basically how you improve at anything in life, but you know what I mean. The thing I like about the monk fights is the emphasis on defense and being patient. The combat style feels like a traditional FromSoft boss fight, playing passive and then waiting for an opening, which normally I wouldn't be a fan of, but it just works really well here. The pairing is super satisfying and all three phases are incredible. The shadow in between phases are terrifying and honestly I still don't fully understand how to avoid them. Usually I just swing from branch to branch until the monk spawns again. I think it's interesting that you can get a free death blow during this period because it doesn't seem like they did it intentionally due to how small the window is that you have but it's a nice little secret to figure out. The true corrupted monk feels like the final exam to see if you're ready for the fountainhead palace and I still think it's a pretty necessary skill check. This fight is when the argument of Sekiro being a rhythm game really clicked for me and while it may get talked about here and there I still think it gets overshadowed too much by the other bosses. And moving on to the one we've all been waiting for, we have Elden Ring. Since bosses are categorized a little bit differently in this game, I'm gonna choose an underrated main boss and an underrated side boss. The most underrated main boss in Elden Ring is, you guessed it, Godric. I've hyped him up enough at this point, and while I'm very aware of his lack of difficulty, I still can't get over how impressive his design is for this early in the game. Godric blows any other early game FromSoft boss out of the water in just about every category, and while I think Margit was a little bit more fun to fight, Godric constantly gets overlooked as one of the best boss designs in this game. On top of that, it forces you to utilize jumping a lot more, which is super necessary for the rest of the game, and I feel like this was the first boss that made the invisible posture system click for me. I still kind of think Elden Ring could have benefited from a posture bar. I'm not sure though, you can let me know what you think. But there's nothing I haven't already said about this amazing two-phase fight, but that's my pick for the most underrated main boss. As for the great enemy bosses, I know there are a ton that got slept on and it's tough to take some into consideration due to their lack of difficulty, but I gotta go with Elamur of the Briar here. I still haven't really heard him mentioned and I know the fight is pretty simple, but I just think it was the most straight up fun I had with any of the mini bosses in this game. It's just a straight up 1v1 how I like it and the twist of him using telekinesis to move his sword in certain combos is awesome. He's definitely too easy, but he is pretty aggressive, so at least he's not a total pushover. If they had made this a main boss with more health and maybe a second phase, I think this would have been considered one of the best bosses in the game, but I still think he's underrated as a mini boss. And I thought about doing an outro for this one, but I decided I'll 